Hi, I'm attorney Ben Schwartz. Today we're gonna to talk about three ways unscrupulous insurance company claims adjusters take advantage of injured people after serious accidents. You know, I had this conversation with a friend of mine named Tracy just the other day, and Tracy was essentially telling me that, you know, um, I do a good number of videos, we put them out on the internet, and I talk about how bad it is dealing with insurance companies and I never highlight any of the good things that insurance companies do and you know really I've been thinking about this am I being unfair when I talk about the damage done by unscrupulous insurance companies I've really been thinking about it and I don't think so I think that the general public needs to know how some insurance claims representatives handle things the general public ought to know some of the pitfalls or some of the traps for the unwary. If you've had an accident, you've become injured and you're dealing with an insurance company before you can get to an attorney, like what are some of the things you ought to know about? Um, I don't think that all insurance company people are unscrupulous or unethical, but there certainly is a good number of them that don't uh, act in a manner that I consider to be above board or honest. And so today I just wanna talk about three things. It's just three things that sort of come to the top of my mind in this conversation I had with my friend Tracy. Um, three things, three ways that insurance companies take advantage of people. Hopefully these are things that you have not fallen victim to. Hopefully by watching, these vi you know, by watching this video or sharing this video, with your friends and family, these are things that you and your friends and your family will never fall victim to. All right, so number one, you know, in my practice, in my law firm, we see a good number of people who come in who have sustained really severe injuries after being injured on the job, you know, sustained really severe injuries after having an accident on the job. And they're coming to us because they're considering making a workers' comp claim. And when I say considering making a workers' comp claim, I would say maybe like eight out of 10 cases, our client is really sort of hesitant about making a workers' comp claim because someone on the job has told them, well, look, if you make a workers' comp claim, you might end up losing your job. You know, we don't want a bunch of workers' comp claims. Maybe they've got a broken leg or a broken back or a broken neck and their boss or their supervisor, you know, or someone on the job is putting pressure on them not to make a claim. Just put it through your health insurance. Just let short-term disability take care of your lost wages. And so people come to us and they're really anxious about doing this, or maybe they've talked to the workers' comp insurance company and the claims adjuster has intimated that maybe by completing forms and making the claim, maybe their job will be in peril. Now, I think that in most states, in the United States, there's a law in the books called an anti-retaliation law that says that if you make a workers' comp claim because you're injured on the job, it's illegal for the employer to take adverse action against you. I do workers' comp claims in the state of Delaware and I know that we have a law in the books here, and I believe in most states, if not all states, there's an anti-retaliation law. So if you've been injured in Delaware, I can tell you that law exists. If you've been injured in another state, get with a workers' comp attorney in the state you know, where you work, where you were injured, and find out what your rights are. But that's one thing that insurance claims reps and employ, you know, people in the employment uh, of the of the job will often do or say to try and prevent people from exercising their legal rights and making a workers comp claim uh, for whatever reason another unscrupulous practice that I've seen quite often is what I would refer to as a sucker settlement you know uh, you get in a car accident the at-fault driver's insurance claims representative contacts you and they're very friendly and they're very easy to deal with and they say to you something along the lines of listen you know we realize with your injuries you may not be able to cover the rent or maybe you're not going to be able to afford food to put food on the table can we help you out can we give you a check 
you know, we can give you a check for $500 or a check for $750. And if you accept that check, you may be waiving all of your legal rights against the at-fault driver or against the at-fault party. In fact, when I started practicing law, one of the local insurance claims offices um, in the town where I started practicing had a claims representative, her name was Karen. Karen would go out and she would wait at the home of the accident victim. And when they came home from the hospital, she'd jump out from behind the bushes and she'd have a checkbook and she would lay this spiel on them about how she's there to help them out. She wants to give them a check here, just sign for it. And what these people are signing is a release, waiving their rights. I consider this to be completely unethical and completely unscrupulous. If you've been injured in any type of accident, you should be aware that some of these insurance companies do this. They send someone out trying to be helpful, but what they're really trying to do is get you to waive your rights. So you never, if you've been in an accident, you never want to set, you know, you never want to sign anything for any insurance claims representative unless you've thoroughly reviewed it and maybe had an attorney thoroughly review it too. All right, here's a third example of how these unethical insurance companies function. I've had more than one case that's say a slip and fall case where someone slips and falls in a store, they get severely injured, they you know ripped up their tendons in their knee or they ripped up their shoulder or they cracked their head on the cement you know, on the floor of the store and knocked themselves out and now they've got a concussion, what have you, okay? These are slip and fall cases happening in a store or an apartment complex or something like that. The client comes into me and they say, I'm really not sure if I want to hire an attorney and go through the process, you know, because the store's insurance company or the apartment's insurance company offered me a settlement of $5,000. And I say to them, well, you know, what do you have in the way of medical expenses? Well, I've got $5,000 in medical expenses. We contact the insurance company and we come to find out that what they're offering is money from their med pay policy rather than from their liability policy. And they're wanting this client to sign away all of their legal rights in return for payment under med pay. Now, if you are injured in a store or you're injured in an apartment complex, you know, oftentimes if it's commercial premises, they've got an insurance policy and the insurance policy has two parts. One is med pay, one is liability. Med pay is no fault insurance coverage. It pays your medical bills regardless of who's at fault. Liability insurance is insurance that covers a lawsuit, that covers your pain and suffering, it covers other things. If you have permanent impairment, etc., that's where the money comes from if you file a lawsuit you know, based on fault, based on negligence. And what these unscrupulous claims representatives are doing is taking the money that they're required to pay out. It's no fault insurance. They're required to pay it out and pay it to the medical providers. And instead of just paying it out the way they're supposed to, they take that money and they say, you know, we can give you this money as a settlement, just sign your rights sign away your right to make a claim, and that way they never have to pay out anything under the liability policy. I consider it to be completely unethical. You know, if, if that claims representative were your attorney or your doctor or some other professional working for you, they would have an obligation to advise you, this is where the money's coming from. We're not doing you any favor. We're paying out the money that we would have had to pay out anyways. Um, but because they're the adverse parties, insurance company, they don't owe you that obligation in most cases. And so they're not gonna volunteer anything. If they can get away with murder, they'll get away with murder. So anyways, you know, this is, some, this is a conversation I had with my friend Tracy and uh, it got me really thinking and just off the top of my head I can think of three three ways that insurance claims representatives regularly are trying to take advantage of the people that come to us for representation and I think it's bad practice I think it's something that should stop uh, thanks for watching this video if you um, if you have had a situation where you've had an unethical 
or uh, you know, a uh, dishonest claims representative take advantage of you or try to take advantage of you, I'd be interested in knowing about it. You know, tell us your story in the comments to this video or send me an email. My email address is ben.schwartz at schwartzandschwartz.com. Thanks for watching.